Hi there, my name is Michael, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the social media images template for Photoshop that you can get for free at applypixels.com. Yes, free. Most resources on applypixels requires you to become a subscribing member for access, but consider this a first of several freebies to appear on the site. Maybe if you like what you see and you use this, you'll consider joining and using some of the many other excellent and powerful tools there. This template is pretty straightforward. You post things to social media all the time, but there's actually a growing number of sizes and dimensions that you need to keep track of if you want to post the best possible and correct images to each platform and in each context. If you're a professional marketer, you already know this, right? But the rest of us, we don't necessarily think a lot about this. I usually end up Googling what the correct resolution is for Facebook or for Twitter at the time of my post. But with this little resource, I don't have to do that anymore. It's a really neat little template that just lets me pick a platform and a context and then worry about making the actual content look good. Let me just give you a quick rundown of how you use this template. What you need is this folder downloaded from Apply Pixels called Social Media Images and a copy of Photoshop. Let's go ahead and open up the folder. Inside the folder, you'll find a bunch of templates. Now, this is pretty much a work in progress, and I imagine that I'll be expanding this set as, as I go along. Right now, there is uh, Facebook images, Twitter images, and LinkedIn images. I'm gonna add more features to each of these templates. I'm also probably gonna add more templates. And then we have a little actions file here. Now, as with all other of my templates that require actions, please make sure to import those actions into Photoshop before you get started. You do that simply by double-clicking the file. In Photoshop, you'll notice that the folder is now added to your actions pane. And if you're not seeing your actions pane, you can always find it by going to window and hitting actions. Now, as I said, this is a pretty basic template. All it really does is give you those specific sizes that you need in the different kinds of contexts. This is uh, the template for the Facebook images as it looks as of this recording. There's definitely gonna be more stuff in here later. Once we started digging into this, it's actually pretty crazy how some of the platforms really have very specific requirements for the different types of content that goes on there. So in this Facebook uh, images template, here's just some of them. You can notice how the personal cover actually has different dimensions from the, the business cover. The group covers are different from the events covers and so on. So yeah, this is your quick handy guide to those sizes. We also have Twitter images, which uh, I'll dive into in a, in a moment, and uh, LinkedIn images. But as I said, I'll definitely be expanding this to cover other areas, other social networks and other contexts. Let's go ahead and open up one of the templates. Let's open up the Twitter images. It looks something like this. And in this template, you can pretty much do three things. You can get the tweeted image, which I think is probably the most important one. And you can get the background photo for your profile and a profile photo. So the way you edit these is through smart objects. If you look out here in the left hand side in the layers pane, you'll notice that there's a smart object uh, for the tweeted image. And if we go into the cover and profile folder, you'll find the smart object called edit to design cover photo. And if you go in here, double click it, you can design your cover photo here and it has a little neat guide to tell you where your profile picture is actually gonna be placed on the platform on top of your photo. Let me just give you a quick example of how that works. Dropping in a picture here, scaling it up, placing it underneath the guides. So now I can tell where the profile picture is gonna be. I can move it around for a more optimal placement. Once I'm satisfied with it, I just hit Command S, saving the smart object, and I can close that up. And now you'll notice that the main template file has updated with a neat little graphic that shows how it's actually gonna look on the platform. That's pretty cool, that's pretty neat. We can also go ahead and edit the profile picture. We do that by finding the edit to set profile picture smart object. Again, double click or right click it and hit edit contents. And this gives you your 400 by 400 pixel squared canvas that Twitter suggests that you use for your profile picture. Again, let me just drop in the apply pixels profile picture, hit save. And now you can see that it has updated in the main template file. Now let's get to the thing that you'll probably be using more often, the actual content that you tweet, the uh, tweeted image. You'll just find the smart object out here in the right hand side and double click that. And this canvas is 1024 by 512. It's a two to one dimension, and that's actually the most optimal size to tweet in. 
these specs can't be found on the documentation and that's exactly the sort of stuff that I'm always frantically looking around on the internet or the latest blog post to find when I'm doing a social media content. And it's different from, from Facebook or from LinkedIn or and obviously from Instagram. So it's really neat to just have all those different resolutions in these templates rather than having to remember them all. Now, this is pretty simple. You can paste your image in here. You can design whatever you need to design in here. I'm going to totally go all cooking show on you and cheat again and just drag in a picture that I did earlier, save that out and close the smart object. So now I've pretty much filled out all the smart objects. I've got a cover photo, I've got a profile picture, and I've got some content. Now what I could do if I am just saving out the picture, I don't actually have to use actions for that, right? I could just open up the smart object and save that out as a PNG. That'd be perfectly fine. But for consistency's sake, let's just jazz it up with some actions. Remember we imported the actions before, you'll go and find those actions and you'll find Twitter, and we're gonna go and hit play on those actions. And what it actually does is it, it just opens up those individual smart objects and saves them out. And if you go to your desktop, you will now find both the profile picture, the new cover background photo and the post. That was pretty easy, right? The other templates in the social media package works the same way. You've got a bunch of different smart objects nested with uh, some UI where it makes sense so that you can sort of see some context and you can go and find the correct sizes that you need for the specific situation that you're in. You can also fill out all of them as we did here and use the actions to really automate that process. Like with most of the templates that you'll find on Apply Pixels, these resources have grown out of the everyday need of the busy designer and the developer. I've personally long wanted simple template files for these types of things. They're not super advanced. Most of them are literally just canvases with specific resolutions, but they really do save you some time rather than having to always find those specific sizes for each platform around the web. Now you can download this template for free at Apply Pixels, but I hope you'll browse around and look at some of the other stuff I've got there and consider becoming a member. I hope these templates help you spend less time looking for specific resolutions or dimensions and just making awesome content for your various social media outlets. Thanks for watching.